I'd like to ask you a specific question, which is to have a think about new patients now coming through the system. I appreciate the medical system may have changed, innovations have happened, you know, um, but what I'm really thinking in general terms, given your experience over all these years, what would you say to a new patient who's just starting their cancer journey with a melanoma? Is there anything that you would want to feed back to them? I, th I think the main thing would be to be very aware of, their, of your own body, very aware of changes in that body and be vigilant about them and not be afraid to go and discuss them with the specialists. You know, self-refer. You've got it. The sooner you can do that, the better. Yeah. If you feel that there's something wrong. And my experience is that you'll never be looked at or laughed at for, for doing that. And yeah. that, that people will always take you very seriously. Yeah. Uh, and that really is very important. I suppose the other things is I, I, I just take on board what Dr. Nicholson Turst told me about the internet, which is don't look at it. <laughs> um, you know, that the, there might be some websites out there that help yeah. with, with web chat, with um, chat rooms and yes, things yeah, like yeah. that. But, but if you start looking for information, it's not relevant to you. And if you look at it on the internet, what you need to do, the information you've got to get is from your consultant. In a way, you're looking for good quality filtered material that can be personalised to you. Yeah. Um, there, is, there are useful sites out there, um, but it's best to be directed to them uh, yeah. rather than coming across sometimes invalid material out there. And there's a lot of it. Yeah. And that, that really surprised me, yeah. how, many, how many websites there are out there yeah. that, that are just totally irrelevant. Yeah. And you, you've just got to ignore them and, and wait for somebody to tell you where to go to for, for that information. Okay. I think the family thing as well that yeah. we, we talked about, mm -hmm. you've got to be very strong and find ways that you can cope, yeah. um, whatever it might be. Everybody's got coping mechanisms, mm -hmm. but you've just got to find your own way of doing that. Yeah, using resources that are around to the the best you can mm. and coping as a unit if as a unit if you can yeah if you've got the benefit of a unit then 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 talk and speak and communicate and and try and build strength off of each other everybody's stronger together if you haven't got that then try and find some people that you can communicate with and, and find that strength with. and just out of interest you mentioned the children you know going back to what you said about whether to tell them or not what's your reflection now about whether to tell the children who are growing up about what's going on? I think you tell them as much as they can understand. It, I think is how I, would, uh, how I would assess it. In the first instance, our children wouldn't have understood it. They were four, five, mm. one year old. They didn't understand what was happening. Yeah. When they were older, they understood more. Yeah. But again, you've got to be very factual and make sure that they do understand what you're talking about. Yep. So you, if you start floating what terms around yeah. that they can't understand, then they'll worry about it. So you've got to make sure that they, they can understand and they're coping. If you start floating things in front of them that, that, that are beyond their ken, then they'll, they'll, they'll panic about it. Yes. So you've got, to, you've got to understand that side of things. That's, that's good advice.